Hi everybody, it's me again with another review. Um, this time I'm gonna review the Philco Mag Magistouch Linear R. Uh, it's a limited edition. Um, this review will be in a new format. Uh, normally it was more uh, scripted. Uh, and this time I'm just gonna well tell something about this keyboard right off the bat. So I'm just gonna tell you everything I know about this keyboard. And um, yeah, we're gonna see how it uh, turns out. Right, so like I said, th this is the Philco Magistouch. Uh, it's a, a linear keyboard. I'm gonna tell more about uh, what linear keys are uh, in the review. This is the front of the box. And here we have the back of the box. And you can see it has a red switch. Uh, a red switch is linear. Um, this box also contains a, a PS2 to USB adapter, so you can use this particular keyboard um, on non on all the computers that only have PS2. Uh, so you can just um, use that converter, and then uh, it'll work. It also has a key puller, and it's made in Taiwan. Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh, there's something here as well on this side. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Uh, okay, the body color is black. Key arrangement yeah, is US ASCII. Key switch, red switch, and key rollover. Um, and key rollover means um, that you can press as many keys as you want, uh, and they'll all, uh, as many keys as you want simultaneously. And they'll all register. Um, uh, the thing is, it doesn't. It's not crossed, so I don't know if this particular keyboard has Anki rollover. Uh, by the way, Anki rollover over USB is always constrained to six key rollover. So if you're using USB and an Anki rollover board, you'll have at max six keys you can press simultaneously. And if you press 7 simultaneously, uh, they'll not register all. Okay, and what we have here is, a, you can see, oh, hope, hopefully the focus gets it. Well, it's a, it's a printing position, so where the key legends are printed. And this on this particular board, they're printed on top of the key. Okay, enough about that. Opened. Okay, these keycaps are not the original keycaps. I uh, modded those with uh, special keycaps uh, because I like these keycaps a lot better. Uh, as you can see, you have a plastic cover. Uh, you can use a dust cover. You can use that uh, so it won't catch uh, dust. Okay. Here's the adapter. Well, I put it in just to show you. So this one goes inside the PS2 uh, connector at the back of your PC, and the USB goes in here. All right. So we also have a keycap puller. Uh, this keycap puller makes it possible to pull keycaps. I'm going to show that uh, uh, in a few, uh, yeah, later on in the video. So I'm going to take this out. Here is the USB connector. It's fixed to the back. Uh, le some other keyboards have this. Uh, you can detach this. Well, I'd rather have that, but in this case, yeah, it, wor it just works. Um, this covers the back. Okay, you can see here four non-slippery feet. Uh, these you cannot well, well uh, and you have got uh, these uh, two adjustable feet uh, with also non-slippery uh, uh, stuff <laughs> at uh, at the at the end. So that really works well. It's a uh, it's a pretty solid uh, uh, construction like this. This keyboard is um, uh, plate mounted. And that means it has a 
metal plate, the size of the board, inside the board, and underneath that metal plate there is the PCB, the printed circuit board, that takes care of the electronics. Uh, um, that makes this, this plate makes this keyboard uh, heavy and very, very sturdy. It's, uh, it's, it's really rock solid, uh, this, this little keyboard. It's a tankulous, what does that mean? Uh, normally you would have on this side you would have number keys and uh, other uh, other keys um, I'd rather have a tankulous it's called tankulous also short uh, short uh, t t key tkl um, I'd rather have that because it, I, I've got more room and I don't normally use a lot of numbers so uh, uh, I like this uh, this format a lot better. It's nice, small, uh, and and uh, it fits my uh, desk a lot better. Okay, so like I said, these are not the original keycaps. Uh, normally, you would have uh, lasered keycaps on this board, so, but um, when I bought it uh, used, it didn't have any keycaps, so that forced me to find proper keycaps for this uh, keyboard. And I found a old cherry board that had double shot keycaps. Now I'm gonna use the keycap puller to show you what I mean. These are called double shot keycaps. Um, as you can see inside the cap itself, you, see, you can th see the thick edges. It's really thick. Uh, normal keycaps uh, are not as thick as this. Uh, the keycap material is ABS. That's a sort of plastic that, um, yeah, the, the, uh, apparently double shot keycaps are always made of ABS. Well, 99% of the time. And uh, you can see in the stripes in the middle of the cap, uh, I, I, yeah, you can see it, and that's that's well, when you see that those stripes, you know you have double shot keycaps. Double shot keycaps means it's um, the keycap is made in two shots, and the lettering is actually part of the keycap. So um, you you cannot feel it. Uh, some keycaps you have lasered lettering, and you can feel the lettering, but in this case, the double shot keycaps. You cannot feel the lettering, it's, it's really smooth. And the effect is that this keycap is very thick. Uh, it makes for a really nice typing experience on this particular uh, keyboard. So, um, as you can see, um, most of these are the double shots, but these, the bottom row, are called the modifier keys. Uh, that old cherry board I harvested these keycaps from uh, did not have the proper size for these uh, modifier keys. These modifier keys are 1.25. That's a measurement for the keycap size. It's almost one point and a quarter, <laughs> 1.25 bigger than a normal size key. So uh, in order to get this proper size keycap I had to look inside my bag of keycaps and I found these uh, red green blue RGB uh, modifier keys and I put them on they are uh, really thin keycaps but uh, well they uh, they function uh, properly uh, and these two three modifier keys are uh, actually uh, lasered uh, PBT and PBT is the other kind of material you can find for keycaps. Uh, the third one is POM, P-O-M. Uh, not many keyboards use that. Uh, most of the time it's uh, ABS, like uh, the double shot here. And this particular keycap is lasered. Uh, you can see that lasered keycaps don't have a lot of contrast as compared to other keycaps. These are uh, lasered. PBT caps and uh, yeah they function properly. Um, uh, one more thing I can say about these um, modifier keys is, is that they need a centered stem. This is called a centered stem. It's in the center of the keycap. Uh, some 
cherry boards don't have this centered stem. It's they have it off center or to the left or to the right. And when you have those keycaps, you cannot use those keycaps on a centered stem Philco in this case. So uh, the one of the problems I had with this uh, with these caps was the caps lock key because the cap this was the caps lock key that was originally part of this uh, keycap set. And as you can see, it's not. The, the stem is not in the middle. I'm gonna take this this other one off. Mm -hmm. There you go. This is also a double shot key. I, I got this from another keyboard, and as you can see, um, that one is centered, and this one fits here. This one does not. It doesn't fit. So, yeah, that's that's one of the things you have if you um, are into um, uh, keycap modding. You'll find that you'll need um, the for Philco at least the stems in the center of the cap. All right. So, um, uh, one more thing is that uh, this problem I have with the modifier keys. And uh, also the spacebar, spacebar from the cherry old cherry keyboard did not fit. It's 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 a particular kind. Um, you um, get you have to get these keys from uh, another keyboard, or you can buy a Moogle kit. And a Moogle kit is something that was well the name popped up when a certain user called um, a Moogle Stillskin also. Um, a keyboard enthusiast and he uh, coined the idea of selling uh, Moogle well kits that can be used w together with an older uh, keycap set made by Cherry to complete your set. So in this case, you a Moogle kit will have these modifier keys that will work. Um, uh, oh yeah, I didn't tell you about this. This is the ANSI layout. As well of this uh, uh, this key uh, well I'm from Holland and in Holland we use mainly use ANSI keys we don't have a, a German layout or a Finnish layout or whatever we have a uh, we most of the times we use US layout and that's uh, uh, the, with, with uh, ANSI keys uh, this is an ANSI enter and sometimes you will see big L-shaped enters. That's, that's not ANSI. This is an ANSI Philco with an ANSI Cherry keyboard keycap set. And that one fits the Philco just fine. Also, these the shift keys, they fit. But I, for the, the, the older, from the older keyboard, they, they would fit. But I, uh, this, uh, I wanted to have um, this nice green uh, uh, RGB uh, set. So... That's why I changed them. All right. Um, one more thing. I'm going to try and show you how you can remove uh, the shift, the, 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 these keys, the shift key and the backspace key and the enter key and the spacebar key and how you can reinsert uh, your key. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little room for myself. I'm going to pull the key, uh, and this, in, in this case the space bar, a little bit, and it's it's loose, and then I'm gonna push it to one, push with the left finger to the right, oh no, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do it the other, I'm gonna push to the right, ah, there we go, I just, uh, I just pressed on both sides, and when you look up, when you turn this, the face, well, when you look at the back side of the spacebar, you see two of these, uh, yeah, it's stems as well. And this is, um, you, you can use these together with these uh, metal bars here, and uh, they have a uh, uh, orientation. They, when you look at them, you'll see there. Hopefully, you can get, catch this on the camera. 
you can see there's a, a difference in the orientation of the of these little stems. Um, they have to be in the proper orientation or your keycap won't fit. In this case, um, yeah, I put them in the right orientation. And I'm, now I'm going to try and put them back. Okay, I first put the left side in. Okay, I can see it's in. And then I'm going to press the right side. So, that's in. And then I'm going to put it over the red key switch and then I'm going to press it. So there it's in again. Well, I hope <laughs> I hope for you well I hope um, that was clear. You can do the same with the shift and the caps lock, the enter and the backspace key and yeah it's just a matter of just trying. You, you just just pull it pull it out a little bit, and pull the key cap out a little bit and then um, yeah just press on both sides to um, to, to get it out of the grip of the of the metal bar, and yeah, just reverse the order of those uh, uh, things you do in order to reinsert it. Okay, okay, that's enough about the caps. Um, I'm going to tell you more about the switch. Uh, but you see here is a red MX switch. And the red MX switch is a linear switch. I also have one here. Let me see if the focus gets it. It got it has four pins. Uh, two for the uh, actual making the actual contact, and two for uh, either a diode or a jumper. And um, yeah, that's that's what you have with this switch. Uh, if you if you could look uh, look at it, maybe you can see it. It's marked cherry on the top. This is a linear switch. Um, you don't feel a bump and you don't hear a click. Uh, you can hear a clack though when you press the keys. What you hear here, what you hear now, is the clack of the keycap hitting the metal plate inside this keyboard. That's what you hear. You don't hear a click uh, from the key switch itself. I can I can just press this and you won't hear a thing. This is a linear switch. It's lighter than another linear switch. It's called Cherry MX Black. This one you, um, the, the red one is lighter than the black one, so the black one is heavier than the red one. Um, I'm not gonna throw numbers at you, how many newton you need to press it or whatever. You just just remember that the black ones are more or heavier than the red ones, and uh, mainly people just either like the black ones and dislike the red ones, or the other way around. Um, well. I'm of the kind that likes them both, so uh, I'm 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 a big fan of linear switches. That's why I have this keyboard as well. Um, I like to have it, yeah, pure. Um, there are two other kinds of switches, and those are the Cherry MX Blue and the Cherry MX Brown. These are the four major. MX Cherry switches. They are still made, produced by Cherry, uh, and uh, that's why you can get them inside the keyboards these uh, you can buy these days. Uh, let's first start with the blue. The blue is actually a clicky switch. You can you can hear it. Um, this. Clicky switch also has a bump at the particular click point, uh, so you can feel a little bump when you press it. And when you press it, when you press through that bump, you can hear uh, well the, the click is sounded. So you, uh, this is a clicky bumpy switch. Well, actually, a clicky switch is always bumpy. So uh, this is something in between. This does not click, but it does have a bump. 
that's cherry brown. If you press it, there's a little bump you can feel when you press it. And that's called Cherry MX Brown. I like the Cherry MX, well, actually, I like all <laughs> Cherry MX swatches. Uh, it's, it's a matter of taste as to what you would like to have on your keyboard. Um, so, yeah, that, these are the four different kinds of uh, Cherry MX swatches you can have. There's also Cherry uh, White um, and Cherry Clear. But they are not that common, so I won't uh, dive into those. They are basically variants of the same keys. All right. So, um, what more can I tell? Oh, I can I can um, um, let you hear what this keyboard sounds like when I just press when I just type something. I'm gonna do two kinds of typing. Uh, first, I'm going to do the normal my way of typing, and that's called bottoming out. And bottoming out means that you can you press the key all the way to the lowest point, and you can hear the clack. This is bottoming out. I always bottom out. I cannot do it other ways. But there are people who can not type uh, uh, whilst floating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It resembles floating because you don't really um, hit the key with enough force to hear the clack. You just you are in the middle, and that's what sound you hear now. It's not because of the clack. It's because of the keycap returning to its position, and then you can hear the you can hear the sound that it makes. Then, so I'm first gonna do it bottoming out. Now I'm going to try not bottoming out. It's really difficult, but... Yeah. Alright. Uh, I think that's it. I told you all about the keycaps. I told you all about the key switch. I told you about the key modifiers. About the Moogle kit told you about the plate inside this keyboard, uh, showed you the back of the, of the keyboard, showed you the box of the keyboard, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna post this um, review uh, on YouTube and on deskthority.net. Uh, if you like it, or you have comments, or you have see ways of improving my way of uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, review I, I'm doing, please let me know. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I hope you liked the video.